All right. Hold on, guys. We're going to start this over. <laughs> like... everybody thank you for coming today this is it's iBugs life and as you can tell from our intro we're going to be talking about moving but before we do that we have a few quick announcements and then we'll get started uh, we are iBug we're a nonprofit you know all that good stuff so visit our website iBugtoday.org to get all the latest information about our services this week, what do you have left for this week? Tomorrow night, I bug not at the movies, watch virtual movies. Every Friday we watch a movie. Tomorrow is The Lost City. It's from 2022, starring Sandra Bullock and the person whose name I can't say, Chatham Tanning, Tanum Chating, or whatever his name is. So come and check that out. And then on Saturday, we have the iBug Apple Workshop from 2 to 4. We're going to have some really fun demos. So come and check that out and the latest Apple news. Then back on Monday, we'll do our regular trading on the iPhone. All those things that I just mentioned are on this same Zoom conference line. Okay, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and quickly go around like we always like to do. Say who you are and where you're from, please. Oh, and you know, maybe we'll make it fun. Do you have moving in your future or recent past? <laughs> okay, who wants to go? Uh, I guess I'm the first one. I'm David from New York. Uh -huh. And hopefully in the future, I would like to move. All right. Thank you, David. Keep going. You're back. Glad to have you, sir. Okay. Who's this, that? Oh, Kathy. This is Kathy from Tulsa, uh, and I moved quite a lot. And um, we joke about dying in the place we're living in now, but um, I think we might have to move one more time. Oh, well, that's pretty morbid, Kathy, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> well, we are getting old. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Okay. We're both retired, Hopefully so. that's not anytime soon. Okay, thank you, Kathy. All right, who's who's next? <laughs> who, who's Hi, next? this is Karen Petty. I've moved a lot in the past, and we probably have one more move in us, but there's no plans to do it anytime soon. All right, Karen, glad to have you. Mm -hmm. And the better half, or not better half? <laughs> yeah, the better half. <laughs> well, I probably have moved more than uh, probably have moved more than Karen, I think so. and I've moved many times in many places, and I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, Richard and Karen. Glad it's always nice to have you guys. Okay, who's next? This is Michelle. Yes, Michelle. <clears throat> Hi, um, from Charleston, South Carolina. No, do not have plans to move anytime soon. All right, good girl. Okay, next. I'm Ann yes. from LaGrange, Illinois, and I'm considering moving in the next couple months to Ooh. a retirement facility, but I'm scared, so I need some help. Oh, well, you're at the right place, Ann. We wish you all the best of luck. Thank all you. right, we could always come and help you. Who knew, right? <laughs> it's iBug's moving service. Yeah, that'll be next year. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> next. Mm. Who's next? Jake from Michigan. Hey, Jake. Hello. Um, I moved 12 years ago. I don't think I'll be moving. Uh, Anytime soon, but I bet you I probably will, though. Okay, well, good. All right. Thank you very much. Hoping you will be moving on up, Jake. Okay. All right. Who else? Jerry from Austin. Oklahoma. Whoa, whoa. Jerry. Go, Jerry. <laughs> I moved two years ago into my nonprofit, and I hope I don't ever have to move again. But my mom must have moved almost every year. I think one of my sisters counted. They went to seven schools. 
um, wow. because my mom and dad moved us, you know, every year. One time she moved across the street into wow. another house, and we always told her that she taught us flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jerry. All right. I think I heard Gary. Yes, yeah, Gary and Austin and I have uh, moved quite a few times with some interesting, interesting experiences. And there's probably another move or two to do. Who knows? All right. All right. Okay. Keep going. Who else? Did I miss somebody? Gloria from Houston. Oh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. No plans to move in the future. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Miss Gloria. Who else? Buddy. This is Ned from Kyle, Texas. Yes, sir. Have moved about uh, 10 times in the past and wow. uh, okay. do not plan to move anytime soon. All right. Very good, Mr. Ned. Okay, who else? We're just going around to who you are, where you're from, and if moving is in your near future or near past. And this is Shree. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Shree. Uh So I'm not sure about us moving, but I just we just moved my parents. Okay, that definitely counts. We all have to deal with that too. So thank you, Shri. Like right now you're dealing with that, right? <laughs> yep. So, okay, thank you, Shri. All right, next. Who else? Who else? Jody? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I once said I'm never moving again, and that was four houses ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, Jody. All right, who else? Anybody join, want to say who you are, where you're from, and whether you're moving in the near future or past? Okay, well. Hi, this yep. is Helene. Hey, go ahead, Helene. Welcome. Hello, it's Hi. Angelo. Hey, hey go yeah. ahead, Angelo. Let Helene go. Go, Helene. Okay. okay. Um, yes, well, first I wanted to say a happy, happy birthday to Jody. Oh, happy birthday, Jody. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aww. Yes. Thank and, you. That was sweet. And, Very good. And I and I want to say that I feel like I move twice a year oh, because wow. I have to come to Arizona and then I go back to Woodstock, New York. And April fifth, I am doing that move again. And transitions are not my strong suit. All right. She's our snowbird. All right. So very good. Thank you, Miss Helene. All right, Mr. Angelo, go ahead. Well, hello. I was unmuted, so you didn't hear me, or the reverse. You okay. didn't hear me the first time. That's uh -huh, all. Uh -huh. So, how are we you doing? We did. I was just ignoring you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We want to know who you are, where you're from, and whether you're moving in the near future or near past. Um, okay. So, I'm Angela. I'm in Ottawa. And I, I'm listening to see how one would move from Ottawa to Houston. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, we'd love to have you. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Last call. Somebody join. Want to say who you are, where you're from, and whether you're moving in the near future or past. Terry Sowerman. Hey, Terry. Uh, Terry. Hi. From Arlington Heights. Uh -huh. And what was the question? I'm are you sorry? planning to move in the near future, or have you recently moved? I uh, no, but I'm having to turn my house upside down, so I might as well have moved. Yes, <laughs> I see that. Okay, thank you, yeah. Carrie Ann. Good luck, good luck. Okay, um, well, this is Sonia, and I think many of y'all know we got flooded during Harvey, so we went through a couple of moves associated with that, and that is, I don't never oh. want to plan to move again. So, Okay, and now we're going to hand it over to our facilitator of the evening, George Batiste. George, you there? No, oh, hit the wrong button. I hit the raise my hand button. There you go. Of... You're here. <laughs> All right. Unmute button. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to It's I Bugs Life, another chapter of this, where uh, we're going to be talking about moving. And I've, I've done a lot of moving. If I may share my story, I know there's one person that he's moving, he's changing countries. I've never moved out of the country. That, I imagine, would be a daunting task. But I, since um, I think it was Shri and a few other youths was saying how many times you have moved. And so it, it got me to going through my memory and counting how many times I have moved. And I'm thinking I got to 15 times in my lifetime that I can recall that a move was necessary because of 
various different circumstances that a move had taken place. At one time, I thought we probably was going to be stationary for a while because after so many moves, and then I think it was in the mid nineties, my uh, parents had finally bought a house because we was renting most of all those times. And then I think in ninety five or ninety six, one of those years, maybe ninety six, I don't know. That's when a house was bought in New Orleans, and uh, you know, thirty year mortgage was going to take place. I think it was going to be paid off in twenty twenty six. March of 2026. And so, but at that time I was actually living in Kansas City, Missouri. So that, that was another move that I had to count for. And when I had gotten really tired of the winters that the Midwest were happy to endure, because every winter I asked myself, why am I still here? And then after 10 years, I said, okay, that's it. I'm done. I think I was not only frustrated with the winters, I also was burnt out on the work that I was doing. So I just figured going back to Louisiana where I'm originally from New Orleans, uh, change of scenery may help make things, you know, help, helpful for my mental, my psyche and all of that. And so I moved back during the winter, matter of fact. Matter of fact, when my brother came to help me move, it was in the month of February uh, and it was snowing in Missouri. So from Kansas City and we took the interstate route. We went like to 70 to 55 to 10. And so the whole time we was in Missouri, which was like about maybe three or four, no, actually it was about six hours because it was snow on the ground, ah. which means we couldn't drive. Well, at least my brother couldn't drive like he normally would drive when he's on the road at night. You know, my brother he did did some driving part-time because living. So he he knew how to read a map. He read the road well. But the snow and the ice on the ground, or at least the snow on the ground, kind of slowed us down. And what normally to go from Kansas City to St. Louis would take like about maybe two and a half to three hours, took us like about six hours because of the traction in the ground. And then when we finally was able to escape all of that, then it was a lot easier. Um, so went to Louisiana in 2003. And hold and below, thought I was going to be there for a while. Katrina comes in 2005. So I had to move to Houston. And that, and then that move was an adventure of his own. I could probably do a whole as I both like on, on Katrina experience because um, I've shared it a few times, probably not here, but some people have heard my story. But that was like starting all over because not only did we lose everything, we had to acquire everything all over again in a whole nother city. So, but anyway, it's enough of that. Um, and those of you who were here at the beginning, you heard the music. Anybody remember what show that that theme music had come from? Those who was probably here at the very beginning when we first started and opened up the room. There was some music that was played. Anyone come off mute? Kathy, this is Jerry from Oklahoma, the Jeffersons. The Jeffersons, <laughs> actually. And I just thought it was fitting, you know, <laughs> although that has nothing to do with what we're going to be talking about. Well, not not a whole lot. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't own seven dry cleaners. I'm not moving to a deluxe apartment in New York City. <laughs> but since we decided to talk about moving, we decided to pick that music called it Move It On Up. And it's a good song. Um, so that's the reason I'm pretty. Yes, that was the Jeffersons, uh, which started in the mid-70s and ended in the mid-80s. So, uh, and how I came up with this topic... Um, I'm trying to recall, I think I was talking with a friend of mine and we actually was, as I was coming up with ideas, what we're going to be talking about for the next topic of this particular iBug um, platform. And so, you know, moving because I've done a whole lot of moving. Moving is definitely an experience. And even if some of you, because as I was going to enter, shut this thing up. Hold on, my other phone is getting on my nerve. It keeps announcing the time because I hit the I uh, uh, um, hit the spot while I was checking the time. And so when you do that on an iPhone, it's going to tell you the time every minute when it changes. And that little distraction was uh, like a fly. But um, even some of you who indicated that, um, by the way, is my audio okay? Everybody can hear me okay? Because I'm holding the phone. The normal I have is yeah, sitting you're down. good. You're good. Keep going. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Um 
even if some of you who say you probably don't plan on moving again, there may be somebody you may know that some of the stuff we're going to be discussing, you can share it with them. And that's what, that's why I like to have them kind of like an open forum because we do, you know, pick a topic. I probably do most of the talking, but I also don't mind sharing. If anybody has something they want to add and plug in, we do allow you to do that. You know, first of all, just say your name, wait to be acknowledged, and then we'll allow you to have the floor to go ahead and share based on things that I um, have discussed as well. So, although you may not be moving, you never know what may happen. So you may have a good fortune come in that may cause you to probably, you know, change where you live at. Depends on what your surroundings are. So, <laughs> hopefully, what I move into you for the next little of an hour, two hours, whatever it is, you know, it'll be valuable. It's something you can share to someone else who may be going to move, who's also like us, who are either blind or low vision impaired, that the way we may have to do things may be a little different from other folks. So this is basically tips on moving successfully. All right. Um, one thing I want to discuss first is, especially if you're going to move, is choosing where you're going to move. That's pretty much important. Because remember, moving, especially especially if you're changing homes, what if it's work experiences, what if it's some life experience, maybe some like circumstances may cause you to move. A choice would definitely have to be made. And you want to be a choice that you definitely can um, be comfortable with or that is something doable. What if it's going to be a temporary move or a permanent move? All making the correct choice is definitely. Um, me as a person who is, don't have any vision, who travels independently and wants to be as independently as, as possible, when I make a move, transportation is, our access to transportation is important to me. Um, because especially the way things have evolved, I don't have that many relatives who live here in Houston. Most of my natural family is still in Louisiana. I have a few speckling of cousins that do live here in Houston. And I have a first cousin that lives in Fresno, which is on the outskirts of Houston, Texas, for those of you who are not from here. Ah. And Fresno, Texas is probably about like when my cousins has come to visit me or when I've gone to visit her, it's about a 40 or 45 minute ride. So it's like going way out. And even if I use a paratransit service, that can be an even longer ride. Depends on if they're going to make stops along the way or even if I have a straight trip, whatever route they choose to take can take about an hour. Um, but so um, I, I do need access to transportation or paratransit or something like that, or it's a way that if I'm going to use um, the ride share services like Uber or Lyft or whatever, that it won't be such uh, uh, an expense and that it would be kind of, you know, it, it would cause that kind of problem. So location is definitely important. You know, it, it, that's one of my first type of, you know, making the right choice. The location is going to be favorable to me. Location for us being uh, in pretty much striking distance to things that are necess necessary for me. Eateries, the grocery store, uh, where I work. I'm, you know, I'm still working and um, I don't want to move someplace. And, and believe it or not, guys, here in Houston, especially in my office, there's a lot of people who spend a lot of time in traffic because of where they live at and where they unfortunately has landed employment in my office. Um, we have people on a regular that it's like an hour drive for them because of, you know, where they, their home is. Um, but myself, I try to not be, you know, a matter of fact, it was one time a position had come open that I thought about transferring to uh, but it was going to be like on the southeast side of Houston, a totally different office. And I was pretty confident that I could have gotten the position. But the reason why I didn't even consider or even applying, you know, I thought about it for a minute or two. But it was the travel because it was it was an hour away from where I was living at the time. And I didn't want to relocate to that side of town. You know, I could have done that, too. 
you know, I could have applied and say, if I get it, I can, you know, choose to move over there. But when I moved here to Houston, I knew some people who already lived on this side of town. So that's one reason how I had chosen where I was going to stay at. I remember I had a real estate friend that I had known, well, not had known, I still know him. Um, when I'm talking about, you know, places to live, finding places to live, if I probably wanted to probably purchase a house or, you know, study a mortgage, he says, well, the important thing is where you want to live at, you know, what do you want to choose to live? I'm like, I don't know. I've only been here for like about six months. I have no know exactly where the side of town that I want to reside on. So, but since there was a, a few people that I knew who lived on the north or northwest side of Houston, and I got familiar with familiar with <clears throat> some of the places around here, you know, even learning some of the, the regular bus routes I could catch, even though where I was working at the time was like a traveling task. Um, like it took me, I think it's, I think when I first started, was my, my shift was eight to five. I used to have to leave like at six in the morning because I had to catch three buses actually. One bus was a short ride that took like probably five or 10 minutes to get to the parking ride, get on the parking ride. That ride was about 45 minutes. And then I catch another bus to get to the area where my office was at in the Heights. Uh, and that was like another probably 25 minute ride. So, but hey, I had employment. I was ready to live in there. And this is the reason why I do that. So location, just so don't get too far away from my topic. Is definitely setting the key where you're gonna to choose to move to. That is some place that you're familiar with. If you know people, what if you have family on that side of town? Um, that's something that is definitely key. You also want to make sure that you are being happy. You know, I, I kind of already spoken that being happy with your surroundings. Like me, I, I want to definitely. I, I, it would be convenient for me if I'm in walking distance to something. And now I can walk a pretty long ways. Now walking nine blocks, 10 blocks, which is like about a mile. If uh, I can prepare mentally myself to walk that much, if I, if I have to, uh, I would rather, like if I'm going to a particular um, bus line, I will hopefully don't have to walk no more than four blocks, four blocks. Like right now, where I stay now, there is a regular bus to pass right in front of my complex. So I don't have to, it takes me like two, two, maybe three minutes to get to that stop. But then there's another line that depends on where I'm going at that's like four blocks away. So I'm right near two major bus lines that runs frequently. So when I choose to place, matter of fact, when we first moved to um, Houston after Katrina, where we was picking places to live, we was looking at apartments or houses. I remember asking my brother, I said, wait, I need you to make sure do y'all see bus stops? Because that's important to me since I do a lot of independent travel. So surroundings... <laughs> Yeah, this perfect. is Sandia. Hey, oh, Sandia. Sorry. Yeah, you know, I was going to add to that, um, you know, uh, I hope it's okay to comment, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking, you know, you were talking about, you know, the transportation and so forth. Another thing for me that's really important is like, you know, access to the medical, you know, like your doctors or near the medical center, you know, if you have a lot of health issues and stuff, then you don't want to be traveling long distances to go there you know so um that's something fortunately we live really near our medical center so that's always been really important to me that's exactly important yeah where your where your primary care physician where your office is at you know you may have to make an emergency appointment or an unexpected appointment for, for whatever is going on you don't want to have all that discomfort going on because it's a long ride traveling to your doctor's office, as well as being close to your pharmacy. If you have to have prescriptions to um, pick up, um, right, th right. there are some pharmacies that who will deliver. And then if not, you want to be close to that as well. Yeah. Okay. Did somebody else come up with my one? Yeah, I, I think some it. people want to comment maybe. I don't know. You guys, just say your name if you want to comment. <laughs> But yeah, medical appointments, dentist offices, all of this stuff. You want to make sure that it's in good striking distance to uh, uh, where you live. Sorry. George, Go ahead. Go ahead. This, this is Karen. And one of the things that goes along with that is making sure that you have contact before you move that 
If you don't have family members or somebody with you, contact a state agency or nonprofit so you can get an O&M instructor or somebody who can orient you to the area that you're living in. You know, Karen, I'm glad you pointed it out. That is something that I didn't even write that down. Shame on me because <laughs> I, I promote the service that my agency offers. Yes, um, wherever you choose to live, you definitely want to make sure you get with an O&M instructor so that you can learn the layout of the land, your surroundings. Uh, so that way you won't be so handcuffed if a family member is not around or a good neighbor uh, you, you want to, if you can, you know, especially if you develop that skill to independently be able to travel to, you know, necessary things, you know, taking out your trash, checking your mailbox or uh, going to a neighbor, or, you know, taking a walk, whatever it is, it's good to get with an o &M person so they can help show you some routes to things you may need to uh, be able to walk to. There may be a, um, a, a grocery store that you frequently visit. That could be in walking distance to where you live. And that o &M person can help you map out a route to travel to that. So that is definitely essential um, Gary. For when you choose to move in. Go ahead. Uh, is it Jerry or Gary? Gary. Gary, go ahead. Um, I, have, I agree with the o &M thing. I and mean, I've had to do it without o &M instructors. Certain When I moved here the first time in, to Austin in 90, I had to. I didn't have an OM instructor, so I had to talk to people that I ran across about street directions and uh, stuff like that. So I was able to teach myself the city. And when I moved to Galveston Island, I knew people there. So I kind of just, uh, it's an easy area to learn because uh, the way the streets are uh, on, the, on the island. So it was easy to do, but it's always, if you can do it, get an O&M instructor. I would agree with that for sure. I don't know if you're not working. I don't know if you can get that, but uh, it's a good thing to try to do if you can. Well, I know here in Texas, um, our agencies, even for people who are not working, you know, a case can be open that if, yeah, you just need O&M or basic things to maintain your quality of life. You that services can be provided to you, you know, without any cost to you at all. That's what the agency is in place for. Um, no. and I like you, Gary, I'm one of those because, and then I, I would admit I'm a little adventurous than most folks sometimes. I've had to <laughs> utilize and learn areas without the knowing them, especially. You know, I get out and walk around if I'm walking with someone, including the leasing agent who is showing me the property or showing me the unit. I'm trying my best to pay attention to every turn every crack, every connecting sidewalks, because I know they're not going to have time to kind of walk with me to learn the place. As a matter of fact, this last place, the current place that I'm living in now, uh, when they showed me the unit, yes, they rolled me in a golf cart to the unit. Let's show you the quality of service where I'm at now. Uh, but that's that's a whole nother topic as well. <laughs> they... Um, allow me to walk around the unit so I can, you know, see if it's something that I want to um, stay at, if my furniture would fit in it. And then when I was through, find my way back to the office, which I have no idea where it's at, but thankfully there's enough people to walk around here that I can ask, you know, how do I get there and walk along the lake? So when I decided to move here, um, I think my daughter, when she he kind of showed me the route of how to get from like where my unit is at to the front gate or where my unit is at to where the mailboxes are and things like that. And, and it took some practice, but after, you know, do it a few times and because I'm, I get out and do walking because I got to learn it, I um, was able to utilize the O&M skills that I already have to apply to learning an area. This is Kathy. Hey, Kathy. <clears throat> I one time um, I moved into this apartment and they'd given me a great tour, you know, but it was kind of complicated getting to the elevator, this kind of zigzag, zigzag. And I found out when I was there a couple of weeks, I don't know how long it took me, but that there were stairs, you know, they were avoiding these three steps, taking me this complicated rampway, you know, when if you'd gone up three steps, you're just right there where you mm -hmm. needed to be. And it's funny how you just don't know. Um, you know, and, and that's even a, just a friend or anybody that you know might tell you uh, there's stairs that make it easier, but just nobody thought to say anything. We're just going all all around Robin's barn. 
however you say it. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and that's why sometimes, although some people may get panic and nervous and says, well, how are you going to figure this out? And, you know, let me help you. And I, although I do appreciate the help when it's needed, because, you know, I'm not so naive and so proud that I don't accept help. But once I've got it, and you know, especially the basic, I'm going to do some exploring because that individual, especially any individual, if it's a family member, a loved one, or a neighbor who is very caring, they're not going to always be there at every time that you may need them. You know, they have a life too. So that's the reason why, you know, I, I tend to learn things, how to how to get to them independently. And I even try to encourage uh, folks who actually are learning new theory to do that exact same thing, you know, get you know them, learn a route. Like, even if it's a basic one, it's a new, there may be a shortcut, but whatever's most comfortable to you, you do that because it is you who's going to be doing that independent travel and learning the land. Here's another thing, too, that's important when you have chosen a location and you're happy with this, your decision is what matters the most. And the reason why I say that, because I have in the line of work that I do, I'm a vocational rehabilitation teacher for those of you who probably just hear me for the first time, which means I teach alternative techniques and daily living skills to individuals who have losing their vision or have lost it. And we just show them an alternative way of getting the job done, whether it's at work or at home. And so a lot of my uh, clients that I work with, um, they may, you know, have recently lost their vision or they may have lost their vision for quite a while, but their families and their loved ones really protect them heavily, you know, probably, uh, and, and it could be a lot of contributing factors why that happens. One is they probably have not come into the knowledge that there are alternative ways of getting things done, if it's traveling or just doing things in general. So by them being ignorant to that knowledge, not that I'm calling them ignorant, just saying they're ignorant to that knowledge, so they're nervous. They don't know what to do, so they probably are conditioned or have a systematic, systematic approach of saying, well, let me do this and probably have this doubt that they can't do it, you can't travel there. And so they're going to probably weigh heavy lean heavy on a relationship to try to persuade you, no, you should live here because of one, two, and three, where one, two, and three may have not anything to do with what's comfortable for you who's going to be staying at that place. They may like the decor of the place, but don't realize the other thing may look pretty, but if there are no sidewalks for you to smoothly travel on, then that's not convenient for someone like that. You know, it may be a place that they may think, look, you know, the the the, the uh, landscaping is good. It's got the flowers here. It's got these tall trees, got maybe a couple of fruit trees, but there may not be no sidewalks. which means you may have to walk on the side of the road where there are gutters and ditches. Uh, all of those things could be out of transportation area access to it. All those things that loved ones sometimes have laid heavy on those individuals for them to choose there. Uh, so that's why make sure you know exactly what you're looking for in a place where you're going to bed and you're happy with it because it is your decision. It's going to be your place. If you have a family, it's your family. It's not their family. You know, they may say anything in there, you know, just let me know. I'll be there. Yes, that's nice to hear. I know they probably do mean it, but in reality, there's going to be some times you may need to have access to something and they're not available. They may be asleep. They may have gone out of town. Um, so that's why I indicated that uh, I want to stress that whatever place you have chosen to decide to live, the decision is yours. That's, that supersedes all of that. Uh, it's okay to even ask for advice. You know, weigh, weigh all of the options. Just make sure that you are most comfortable with it. This is Jerry from Oklahoma. Hey, Jerry. Um, hi, George. Um, I just recently was talking with a person, um, and we got to talking about groceries and, you know, how they would order their groceries. And me living in Tulsa, you know, I'm used to all the stores, you know, delivering, or you can go online and deliver. Well, they they had just recently moved to a smaller town, where they're 
there are no groceries that deliver. And so that just reminded me how, you know, we can't just assume that where we are right now, everybody delivered. But then if I move to wherever that may be a smaller country, sometimes people really like living out in the country. I mean, I think the country would be really nice, but that's Mm -hmm. where a lot of the resources are not available, like groceries and things that will uh, be delivered as well. That's right. That's right. I've even told some of my clients, you know, when I, because, you know, I travel sometimes even in the outskirts, even in the suburbs, uh, sometimes extremely way out. Uh, I think one of the furthest I've traveled one time, these people house, they, they didn't, wasn't connected to the main water line. So their water supplies was by a well. Now, if you don't have someone staying with you who can drive, someone who can assist in that way, um, it, uh, or, or you have problems transporting to a place or even probably getting to work, i have probably tell you, you know, consider relocating. You know, to where that where you have access to sources, because uh, yes, and you're right, Jerry. Sometimes you can live so far out that um, delivery service may even be a challenge. You may have to go grocery shopping once a month and get everything you need. Um, I, I've never lived in the uh, as we make those who live in major cities. We call outskirts like living in the country or living on the farm somewhere where I've never experienced that in all my years of living uh i've always lived in a major city so i have no advice or no knowledge i can probably use my best guess as to provide somebody information what they need to do if they do live way out where it takes you probably 40 minutes just to get into town but i, I don't have any experience on that um and i and especially if you have no vision i, I would think it would be tough now, unless you grew up and that's your life that you've been in a while, you know how to uh, farm, you know how to keep up with the landscape, you know how to avoid different things you have to avoid if you got animals on your property. And then, because uh, I remember asking that with somebody one too uh, who lived on the farm. I don't know if it was here or somewhere else I was at that, you know, you know they have animals, they have cattle. I say, well, do how do you avoid? You know, I'll just say, how do you avoid the animal's bathroom? <laughs> if you know what I mean. And they told me to say, yeah, you do have to wear special shoes if you're going to go walking out on the land because there's a possibility um, you can step into some stuff. You know, they don't know. They, 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 they're they not that structured. They, 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 you know, they're going to go where they need to go. But I don't want to digress that far. Um, this, is, this is Karen. Um, <laughs> if I can just address something for, um, I think there was one person who was moving into assisted living. And, and a lot of what we're saying, even though we're talking about traveling out in the community can kind of apply there. Because my guess is with assisted living, there's going to be the need to find your way to the dining room and to where <coughs> the social events are. So mm-hmm. a lot of the same stuff is fine because those can be, sometimes those buildings, you know, have different levels and, and whatever. To make mm-hmm. sure you have somebody and who can orient you to those things so you can take part in all the activities that are offered to everybody else. Um, and don't shy away from asking um, for assistance and for people to orient you to those places so that you can be as active as all the other residents. But so you're in, you may not be traveling outside and taking buses, but you are moving to a new community that's going to have a lot of things to offer for you. So. Um, I just want to say that that no, no. some of these same things to apply to your new living situation as well. And I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, if you happen to, to move into one of the assistant living facilities, yeah, load of, know the lay of the land of their place, which hallway to walk down, how many turns you have to make so you can get to the recreational area or the dining area or even the um, um, the, the infirmary area. Uh, mm-hmm. Those things are important. Not just this, be stuck in a room and wait for somebody to come who, you know, remember that you're there. You know, you try to be as involved as you, as, as you possibly can in those type of facilities. Jody. Um, hey, Jody. Yes, I, I have to laugh. I did live on a farm and you just wear muck boots and you don't care if you step in it. You just think of it as fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> this is I, it doesn't matter if you see or not, right, Jody? 
Right, exactly. And I, I, I actually could tell a funny story about clearing horse manure out of my front. Whenever you have company, you got to clear the horse manure out of the front yard. So I actually had a method for doing it, which I could describe but that's very humorous. But anyway, um, I had a friend that, that somebody found an apartment for him and said, oh, it's only a half a mile from Walmart. It's great. It's really close to this. But it turned out it was on a major highway without sidewalks. And they hadn't thought of that because they'd looked at the, at the apartment with, you know, by driving in the car. But then on the other hand, you have people that are so over concerned like landlords that won't show you a second floor apartment because they don't think blind people can climb the stairs. Mm -hmm. So you know, you've got to really be aware uh, personally of where you're going and, and advocate for yourself too, because you know, you, you've got one extreme to the other extreme and, and, and all that. But anyway, when you're cl clearing horse manure, you got to pull the wheelbarrow behind you. And then when you kick it, you stop and you get the shovel, you put it there. And then uh, you have a rubber glove on one hand and you haul it in the wheelbarrow and then keep on walking until you find the next pile. And I'm sorry, Sunny F, you know, every every month we always take a left before we're going on. So now I'm curious, Jody, and I'm glad you <laughs> So what what do you do with it? What do you what do you I know you have to clear, but where do you put it? Oh, you put it, you just make a manure pile and, and you know, somewhere away from the house so that the flies don't bother you. You let it sit for about nine months and then you add it to your garden. That's wonderful fertilizer. Really? Oh yeah. So wow, you blew me away. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never thought that same thing with the just, chickens. Same thing just, with the chickens. Yeah, you, you clear it away and just let it pile up. I guess you gotta have a spot far away from the house. Oh, yeah, like yeah, you said, it, the flies can be a nuisance and then yeah, exactly. even you the smell a when it rains. Far away from the house. Yep. But you just walk, you, you just pull a wheelbarrow behind you, and then when you kick a pile, you you put the manure fork next to it. And then you have a rubber glove in the other hand, you push it onto the fork. I have a friend that taught me that technique. And she said, well, who said anything about a rubber glove? Wow. <laughs> anyway. This is well, Kathy. I, oh, hold on, Kathy. I got one more question. So, <laughs> and, and, Kathy, don't forget, your, don't forget your comment. So, Jody, um, do you have to wait until it hardens or, um, you know, do, is there? Pick it up. No, yeah. no. Actually, horse manure is a lot easier than cow manure. Horse manure, uh, too much information. It, it's like it's like egg shaped, and and they're they're hard when they when they fall. So that and I live in Florida, so it didn't take long before they baked in the sun. So you know it, it uh, it's very easy to pick up after. But we didn't pick up the manure in the rest of the yard. Just just in the front yard when you were going to have company. I always used to say, you know, you're a farmer when you got to clean the manure out of the front yard because company's coming. And manure does help the grass to grow. Okay. And it does. Circle of life. <laughs> Go ahead, Kathy. I was just going to say, we can segue to, this is how you, when you're um, gathering boxes for the move, you oh, also that's carry the, we, we come into that, but drag, go ahead. The, I'm going to go ahead. drag the shopping cart behind you, just like yeah. <laughs> with the uh, wheelbarrow for the manure. Okay. Okay. I got it. Wow. <laughs> oh, I, I miss those days. I, you know, know what? I used to say there's two. I've done just about everything in life except for two things. I've never gone camping. I've never gone fishing. Now I got a third one. I've never have to worry about shoveling or cleaning up manure. <laughs> 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 um, I, who knows? I may have to learn that, you know, because, you know, life's has a way of making make you encounter things that you never thought you would have to before. And eventually somebody's gonna have to do it. And you know, I'm, I'm man, that's a and smelly job. But actually, anyway. And, and the chickens too. It's not that smelly actually. They're okay. they're herbivores. It's not that smelly. Okay. Okay. Oh you what about chickens? Oh you gotta clean up after the chickens too. And you know, I'm glad you said it because you know with the the way egg prices were skyrocketing, I thought about saying maybe I need to invest oh, yeah. in chicken in the well, roast. Chickens are great. Man, eggs is just, I mean, when I had to spend almost twelve dollars for two dozen of eggs, I thought that was crazy. Yeah. Something's wrong. <clears throat> Thankfully, they are coming down a little bit now. I don't know if they're down where they were like last summer, but they are a little bit better. But it made me thought about that. But you're right. If I had done that, I got to clean up after the chickens. Yeah, so this is Jody again. I, and when you have chickens, you get spoiled because the, their eggs are so much bigger than the ones you get in the store. 
Now I've heard they were fresher, but I never heard that they were bigger. Yeah, the ones we had were bigger. And we, yeah, we so had so many eggs, we, we were giving them away. Okay. I need to go find somebody who has eggs. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know they were bigger. I know you can you got three sides you can get in the store. You can get large eggs, extra large, and jumbo. Yeah. Now, are they bigger than jumbo? No, I'd say they're between large and jumbo. Okay. Okay. Nice time. But yeah, someone told me to say, yeah, the fresh farm eggs, um, a lot different from the eggs you buy in the grocery store. And I had a coworker who promised was going to bring me some, but they never did. So I still don't know what a uh, farm egg tastes like. I'm, I'm just, you know, I wonder if it's going to make my omelet taste different or my scrambled eggs taste different. But well, they taste the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and, and thanks to Sandy who came up with that topic that we did last Easter, uh, extravaganza, um, we learned that particular stereotype or misconception about some people think that brown eggs were healthier than the white eggs and it has nothing to do with it. Yeah, <laughs> we had brown like, and we had brown and white. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the color yeah, of the feathers chicken. that made the difference. Now, speaking of advocating, um, I'm transitioning to like getting assistance with your move because, you know, um, I don't know anybody, even First Society, who's going to move by themselves. Some people may try it. It may take a while if they're moving slow, but no, it is going to take multiple people to move furniture. Um, uh, so getting assistance and choosing friends and family versus a professional company. Now, friends and family, if I will say know who your friends and family are if you're going to allow them to help you. And here's why I say that, because and have, me have been moving for over 15 times. And some of you probably can attest to this too, those of you who have moved a lot. Sometimes the family and friends may not care about your stuff like you do. All they're trying to do is just get the job done. So they may be kind of rough with it or maybe not as delicate, making sure that there are no scratches, how to properly uh, measure if a certain piece of furniture can fit through a particular doorway or even strategize I, how are we going to get this tall dresser or this long couch or refrigerator through a particular door. Uh, some will. I'm not saying I'm not going to say that uh, some won't. But there a lot of times when, you know, it's, you have to be careful as to who you are choosing to assist you with the move. And some people may, a lot of people may show up, you know, say, hey, I, I, you know, I need help. I'm moving on such as anybody can come and help. And some people may show up and they may not have no clue or they may have some clue how to get it done, but they may not have so much of a, a, a connection to your stuff. So all they're trying to do is let's get it out of here. Let's get it on the truck. Let's get it to the new place, no matter what, where, and the reason why I say versus a professional company, because that's what they are trained to do. Most of your professional moving companies, and I've done both. I've done all of that. I've had friends. I've had church members. I've had professional moving companies. And I've had a mix, not including the professional moving companies, amongst the those who were not professionals, there have been a, a, a collection of some who really took care, really did a good job strategizing, measuring up how certain would work, listening to me, since I am familiar how I will work as well, allow me to help. Um, you know, that, that I'll trust that they're going to take care of it because that, that that's happened to me a couple of times. I was truly blessed that I had people like that. And then I had some who, you know, was kind of rough with it that I had to say, no, wait, 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 you guys, hold up, slow down. Let's do it this way because what you're trying to do, shut you down, I'm going to do scratch it up and you're going to damage my stuff. Uh, remember, it is your stuff. It is your family stuff. You have a household. Uh, so now the professional movers, as I indicated before, I've never seen the training, but I know they had to have gone through it because they know exactly how to lift it. They know exactly how to place it on a moving cart. They know how to size up as to which, how they're going to wiggle or get the piece of furniture through the door. They know how to, which I was shocked. They even know how to disassemble some things properly as well. You know, they have the tools or they've done it enough. They know exactly how to take things apart. The reason why I was shocked, because my last move, like when I moved here, I have a couch. 
it's um, if three people can sit comfortably on this couch, two of the ends are recliners, and the one in the middle is not a recline. It's a leather. And it's a nice, comfortable couch, too. I did not know that thing come apart. Uh, because I think when I first tried to move and I had somebody helping, you know, we measured up and wiggled it through there. Well, I actually, I think the first time I purchased it, the the, uh, the furniture company, you know, they brought it in. You know, they didn't have no problems. They did it like in like three minutes. But it was all together. And I was thankful though, that my doorway was wide enough. But when I moved from that particular apartment to where I live now, uh, those guys knew how to take it you know it, it was like it connected through like some sort of metal tracks and i like oh i didn't even know that thing come apart like that so that made it a lot easier for them you know by them having that knowledge and if you're going to choose to go with a professional company they have the, the ones that i have found have used these guys are very efficient i mean not only are they quiet uh, i think one time i had moved from a place they have gotten things put together and have them moved out maybe two rooms and I didn't even hear any noise and it banging and things like that you know they, they didn't speak much English so I didn't know exactly what they were saying but actually they didn't really have to say much it was like it was three people the one who talked to me or the one who collected the payment that's the one that spoke English everybody else <laughs> was comfortable in their language but it's an expense um some of your moving companies may charge an hourly rate. Some may charge an hourly rate plus a service charge. You know, so I would say shop around. If you're going to go with a professional move, shop around, try to get the best rate, the best for your wallet, your bank account. Because, you know, different ones, almost like anything is competitive. Everybody wants to try to offer the best and give you the best uh, without trying to break you. So I've noticed that there are some company have, like as indicated before, an hourly rate where they charge an hour. Some have even just to sign them up for somebody to come out, you got to pay this upfront service charge at first. And then um, I think mileage will come into that as well. Um, what the mileage part is, I don't recall, but I do know. Uh, oh, and then there's another thing. There are some companies who have a two hour minimum, no matter what. Because like the last move I made from here, I'm in a one bedroom apartment right now. I didn't have that much furniture. I just got, you know, a bedroom set, a couch, and a small dinette set. And so I thought, you know, when I assess it, this probably is not going to take no full two hours. I'll say just one hour. But there, I could not find no company that had something built up to where if it's going to be less than an hour, let's give you this rate. Everything was has to be a two hour minimum. And I, you know, I guess that's their business. They want to make sure they're in it to make money as well. They're not just waste time as well. Uh, any comments on this part before I move on? This is Jody. Hey. Yeah, we we moved in state and we moved, uh, and then I also moved, you know, across the country. But the way it was explained to me was that with the with the um, commercial laws pertaining to moving, if you move within the state, they charge by the hour, and if you move out of state, they move, they charge by the pound. And professional uh, movers are, are going to be much more expensive than say, if you, if you rented a U-Haul, but mm -hmm. through U-Haul, you can actually hire two guys. True. And, and, but there is that two <clears throat> minimum, but I know uh, when my son moved, my gosh, they, they were really efficient. They were two, the two guys showed up and they were really efficient. They moved their, their whole townhouse in, in about the two hour time period. The only thing that was funny about it was they were deaf and they had to put the furniture down so they could sign to each other. Oh, <laughs> but they, oh wow. That but, is they, cool. but they got it done really fast. Mm -hmm. They've done this it every time. They know what they do. Go ahead, Shree. I was going to say, um, this made me think about, uh, you know, some of the advantage of getting professional movers. Number one, they're, they're insured. So if something breaks. Uh, yes, they're, that's true. They're, yeah. um, they're responsible. They but I will tell you. I, I will tell you the difference between, you know, you know, the old saying, you pay for what you get. There are professional movers that seem very low. And there's a reason behind that. I remember when Rita and I first moved, uh, when Rita was pregnant, uh, we hired this mover based on cost. And the day that the movers came, there was a kid. It was his first day on the job. 
must have been out of high school. And then they had one other guy who knew who's been a mover. But they were not prepared for the move. I mean, they were just not qualified. And then we actually got the real professional movers. You know, the cost was like three times as much. But I mean, they just knew how to move. I mean, they were like football players. You know, there was no high school kid. They were big guys moving these, you know, they're moving couches, you know, like a, you know, the two guys, they're just lifting the couch and they're just moving. So I think, you know, when you're moving, you really have to think about, you know, cost does come into play, but you don't want to go cheat. You want to know how they move things. I know like we have a, our dining to our dining table, they actually put it in a crate. You know, it wasn't, they didn't just move it. They put it in a crate when they moved it because they didn't want any kind of damage. So, you know, you, you do have to kind of think about all of this um, besides just, you know, is it, is the cost low? Absolutely. Hey, Kathy. I have a picture of my uncle um, going up a, a concrete flight of steps with a, a washer dryer, you know, the stackable ones. And I, mm -hmm. after that, I mean, I think that was the last time I used family for moving because I kept thinking if he has a heart attack on those stairs, moving my washer dryer, you know, which I really wanted to have. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just sometimes if, if you've got heavy stuff or things that um, need extra attention, definitely go professional. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of and the I'll things we did, did was label everything because that way they don't have to point and say, where should we put this? Because <laughs> I won't know what they're, you know, what they're pointing at. So mm -hmm. I tried to but, label but, everything. But Shree, you're Ms. correct. Carrie from Tulsa. Okay, hold on, Carrie. Sure, you're correct. It is good to, um, uh, you know, shop around, get what you pay for, make sure you got good movers. Because I think I was victimized at one time too. We picked one company that it was just two people. Uh, I forget the name of them. And by just being the two of them, I don't know how long they had been doing it, but it seemed to take a while because I don't even know. I think they were just winging it. I don't know how long they've been in business, but they were just winging it. It took a lot longer than it, it, I thought it should. And thankfully, I think they only charge us, um, they didn't charge us by the hour. I think they had like, uh, I think they charged us mileage, something like that. Some way you know, it didn't come out to be, it could have been real expensive if it had been charged by the hour. Cause I think it took like some like, like almost like four hours. Um, go ahead. Um, who was that one to talk? Uh, Jerry. Do it, Jerry. Okay. That, yeah. Um, oh man, I could really relate to the last, um, three people. Um, I'm hard of hearing, so I didn't catch the first two people's name, but the, uh, one that said that the movers were deaf and mm -hmm. they had to put the furniture down to sign. I just thought mm -hmm. that was so cool. Because I myself am hard of hearing, and um, I run a nonprofit where I help deaf-blind individuals. So mm -hmm. whenever I hear about deaf people signing, I think it's cool. And then the last gentleman before Kathy would talk about, um, you know, you get what you pay for. And that's true, because I've moved probably four times since uh, 2016 through um, situations that weren't under my control. And, um, yes, if you go cheap, that's what you get, broken stuff. And mm -hmm. if you go more expensive, you get um, delivered stuff that aren't broken. And then Kathy mentioned about labeling. And yes, that's what I did the last couple of times I moved. Was that I labeled each box, you know, books or dishes or bathroom or bedroom. And that way, and, and I told him I was, I guess, a mega manager. I said, when you come in with something, you tell me what you have. And then I'll tell you where that goes because not being able to see or hear very well, I couldn't tell where they were. I couldn't tell what they were moving. And I wanted to be in control instead of finding my you know, couch in my bedroom or something. And so I feel like sometimes we have to be a little more strict and you know, how we control it, you know, or else they're just going to have things, you know, everywhere. So this, this is, is Sandia. Go ahead, Sandia. 
Okay, um, just following up on the labeling aspect, what we did is if you already know where you're going to have certain things, you're already familiar with the area, what we did is we just put like one, you know, like all the ones would go to the master bedroom, all the twos would go to the study or whatever. And then you don't, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, you, you we did label like what Jerry and Kathy were saying, but um, just initially you're not having to police everything that comes through the door. And so you can just, they, they already know that like room one is the master bedroom and whatever. So that kind of helped. That was my sister's idea. So we did that. This is Richard. Check and double check labeling. Um, my experience when I moved to Houston, I had um, a number of items that were to go to storage, number of items to come to Houston. They switched the rosters. And they arrived in Houston with everything that was to go to storage and nothing that was to come here. So I, I had no bed, um, no, uh, no desk, no um, several, several things that I very much needed. They had to drive back to the city that I came from take the wrong load back. It took me another two weeks to receive the furniture that was to furnish me here in Houston. And that, I can assure you, was a frustrating experience. This is Betty Wise. I'm Betty Wise. Go ahead. Um, who was before Street? Uh, Vincent. Go ahead, Vincent. Um, one item that uh, I always make sure of is that the width of the uh, of the doors and and uh, and then and, and uh, uh, also any area where there are, there are turns, maybe there are corners or something. I always make sure that that the furniture. I had some some pieces of furniture that that were very tall, some of them that were very long, and they could not be a, a, a uh, se you know, separated or split into different pieces. There, it was just a long piece. And sometimes, when you have an, an entrance, you may be able to get it through the entrance. But if you have a wall nearby, you may not be able to turn it, and you may not be able to to put it uh, on its side so, uh, to go through the door. So you have to make sure that whatever you know, the, uh, the the longer and wider the pieces of furniture are able to get through the uh, uh, doors or the uh, uh, corners. Otherwise you're in, you know, you, other than splitting them, cutting them, getting, getting a saw and chopping them in half and then taping them together. You have no, no option there, but to get rid of them. Absolutely, Vincent says, invest in a tape measure. That could come in handy. Go ahead, Shree. A couple of things, um, you know, the tape measure also just made me think of, so when we hired the real professional company, they actually came and measured everything, you know, and from each room, you know, he took down all the notes, you know, this is, you know, and so forth, but he measured it. But one thing I did also want to mention with the professional companies, uh, you know, I mentioned about uh, that they, you're insured. Uh, keep in mind, some of these contracts, they have a deductible. So, you know, you also pay for that deductible. So, in our case, it was anything that was more than five hundred dollars, they would cover. Uh, if it was less than five hundred thousand, uh, I'm sorry, if it was less than five hundred dollars, we you know we would have to pay out of our pocket to get it either replaced or fixed. So you do want to check the contract to see how much the deductible is, um, uh, so that you you don't get a shocker, mm -hmm. something breaks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say there's a lot of advantage when we have a good professional moving company because remember, this is what they do. This is their livelihood. This is their they 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 can walk into place and almost like in a bank, if you do something where it's routine, they know how to assess. They know how to look at something. Yeah, they may measure up, or they may can just even have the eyes and say, "Oh yeah, no, that's not going to fit." They even may already have strategies on certain things how to, you know. If you need to flip it over, if you need to disassemble it, if you need to take the legs off, 
all of that. They, this stuff is in place. It's almost like, um, it's almost like you know, any kind of profession. There's a template. There's a layout. What you're going to do first, you know, an attorney who's taking on a case for the first time, they already know what the what the questions to ask. They know what what the subject matter is, uh, how to come up with a solution. And you know, professional moving companies are just like that. Even when they hire folks, they know exactly what they're looking for. Uh, you got to be able to be able to pick up a certain amount of weight. You got to know how to assess. You know, I'm sure they go through training um, so that things can done. Because for one thing, you know, word of mouth is the best form of free advertisement. If somebody does a good job, they're going to tell somebody else. They're going to get those recommendations, and they're efficient. <laughs> I gotta say the one time, the first time I ever had hired a moving company. It was three of them. I think I called three men movers here in Houston. And they were so quiet and had the supply. They knew exactly what to do. I think all they needed us to do was when we get to the new place, okay, where do you want things to go? Now, I want to go back to, we were talking about labeling because that was one of my topics I was going to bring up. So since we was on there, yes, labeling does help with organizing your move. Um, if, you're, if, you, if you're packing the boxes yourself, it is very good to whatever you're labeling it in. If you have a sighted person labeling it for you, you know, with a highlighter, or if you want to label it yourself, if you're a braille reader, you know, whatever the case may be, or if you are a good job at paying attention to details like me, I can, I, you know, when I'm, if I'm doing the packing myself, I already know which box is going to have what, by how the box is shaped, by how it's poking out, whatever put in it. Uh, but sometimes just to keep myself even more organized so I can quickly tell somebody, I probably would make like a braille label of like, you know, this box is pillows, this box is bedding or something like that. I'm just speaking hypothetically of certain things, which can, you, you can label it. And that does not only help you, the one who's moving, but it also helps those who are assisting with the move. So that's why I indicated too, if you can get to one sided um, to with a highlighter, you know, that's going to be very easy to spot what's in this box and where it goes. For so know, and you can even put what room it goes into. Like if you have a lot of kitchen small appliances, you can have a box for that and label this kitchen appliances. That also will have that professional mover know how to handle that box with care. If you got something here that if you just handle it, you know, roughly, you know, could break. Um, so definitely labeling does help. Make sure, and when you're doing your packing, I think I got to put on my top, it's about supply. So yeah, you definitely want to have the right amount of boxes, have enough boxes, have yourself some labeling, not labeling tape, tape. some packing tape. <laughs> have, you know, tape for that for taping the boxes. If you have ceramic or glass, like, like dishes or stuff like that, of course, everybody knows, you definitely have to individually wrap them because Things can unfortunately get chipped and um, shatter or stuff like that if you don't wrap them with some kind of paper or cloth or something like that. Someone wanted to say something? This Kathy. Go ahead, Kathy. Uh, when I labeled, and I, I'm not really a good, I'm, I'm a Braille user, so I'm not great at print, but I mean, I know my letters and I I took a black magic marker with on a white index card and just taped it to the box that said mm -hmm. living room or and I mean, I think I wrote some funny things because I don't know that sometimes they had trouble reading it, but it really made a big difference. And I was glad I did it that time because um, a lot of times there's a lot of writing on the boxes, especially if you're using old boxes that have been used before. Mm -hmm. so if you write something on the box, you know, it might not be in a place that'll show. And um, what was the other thing I wanted to mention? Labeling, labeling, tape. Oh, so being blind people, we didn't have a lot of newspapers around to wrap things in. And um, I don't know if this was a horrible waste or clever, but last couple of times I moved, we used paper towels a lot, you know, just wrap the dishes in paper towels. Um, Gary. Whoops, sorry about that. Yes, sir, Dan. Yep. <clears throat> I. I didn't mean to interrupt, but talking okay, about wrapping okay. stuff, I have uh, wrapped things in plastic bags that you get at the grocery store. Oh, yeah. and I've also lined my boxes with shredding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oops, you just ready? Or like you said, uh, Kathy, you're braille ready. You can take some old braille magazines if you have to. <laughs> well, that's you know, right. Position. Exactly. And, and um, here's and what I get. Okay, a old t-shirts, old sheets, you know, something called <clears throat> whatever oh, yeah. it is, you can do that. You can also, um, yeah, you know, like me, I live in an apartment complex where we get a lot of bunch of sales papers and that stuff just piles up. So I'll take those sales papers and just write that because I don't read them. Uh, you know, I'm not one of those, you know, I probably should. I'm not a coupon clipper. <laughs> um, you know, I understand it does save money. I do see the advantage of doing that, but, you know, to me, it's junk. <laughs> but uh, man, it's recycling. Fact, Okay, yeah. that's it. Uh, but this yeah, wrap your stuff. Go ahead, Shree. I was going to say, you know, one of the advantages of the professional movers um, when we hired, you know, they basically gave us all the stuff. Uh, you know, they gave us moving closet racks. I mean, they gave us, you asked for it, they just give it to you, the stuff that you want to prepare yourself. And so, you know, even though there's some cost associated with you know, going really at the professional level, mm -hmm. there, are, there are lots of indirect benefits you also receive uh, by going with them. Otherwise, like, you know, you guys were mentioning, you know, the, um, uh, you know, using either t-shirts and all the stuff, you know, they, they give you all the right stuff to move. So you know, that, that also has some cost benefits of um, mm -hmm. picking somebody like that. Yeah. And, and so, especially, you know, if you know you're going to be moving, um, you know, give yourself some time, get a cushion. You know, if, if you have that luxury of doing that, you know, assess the move. Um, knowing that if, 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 if it's going to be, because moving is very tasking. Um, it can be draining. It's exhausting. You know, I've had to think the move before this one. I had to, it was like an emergency move that I had to do stuff quickly. I had to get out of the place. So I, you know, I lost a lot of sleep because, you know, for the most part, you know, the little odds and ends stuff. I pretty much had to pack that myself because it was just me there. And it was during the time of the day, during the week, that I didn't really have anybody that I could call upon. Remember, I don't have much family here at all that I have them to come over and kind of assist me at packing some of this stuff. So a lot of this stuff was I did individually on my own. You know, I went and bought boxes. I went and collected boxes. You know, I went to, um, and that's another thing too, when we're talking about packing, boxes, you know, definitely you want to make sure you have some good ones. You can purchase them. Boxes are an expense, but also if you can if you can talk to some of your your WalMarts or your your grocery stores, you know they they destroy their boxes and that's something they do on a daily basis. But if you can make an arrangement with them, let them know that you want to come and get the boxes before they smash them, they'll do that for you. Um, you know, it's not a problem. It's just an idea of you know communicating what you need, find out the time that they are unpacking. And before they send it to their shredder or their smasher or whatever device that they're using to downsize all the rubbish that they have, you know, let them know you want to collect these boxes. And they'll tell you what time to come and they'll allow you to come in and just pick them up for free. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, but there are, you know, boxes companies like your, uh, your storage facilities, you know, even your U-Hauls, even your um, packing companies you know they do sell those boxes that you have to put together and those definitely will be in better shape than the boxes that you may get from a store because you know it, it's, it's something that they made it for that good uh, jerry uh, yes um i was just gonna say that um <clears throat> i didn't hear anyone say this so i apologize if it's a repeat but what i used a lot in the last couple of times that i moved was my um work cloth towels and sheets and even mm -hmm. blankets and I would mm -hmm. entangle them all among my dishes or my you know breakable or my pictures or you know whatever and yes. um that was a great help so I didn't have to you know collect newspapers and whatever and okay. boxes as uh, someone told me the liquor store is a great place to get boxes because those boxes are much more sturdier than what um, you, you do like have Walmart boxes you're right. You would have to be because, I mean, that's bottles and bottles of liquor. You're exactly. right. I never heard about the exactly. liquor. Exactly. So those boxes were more sturdier <clears throat> to carry. Now, if you're going to carry a bunch of pillows, then it doesn't matter. Get right. a Walmart box or whatever. But if it was heavier thing, then they suggested that they they get boxes or help me find boxes at a uh, liquor store because the boxes were sturdier. Okay, this go ahead, is Sonia. 
Um, yeah, another place for boxes is the big box stores like Costco and mm-hmm. Sam's. I guess she's mentioned Walmart. So yeah, same difference. But um, um, another thing is just because it's a big box, you got to think about the person that's going to be carrying it. <laughs> exactly. You know? So oh, yeah. don't just fill it up to the gills and then it's like, oh yeah, my God, light I mean, just be considerate and when you're packing. So, yeah, I got a story yeah. to share about that. When I moved, and then the the last thing, okay. my perfect size. But yeah, you know, there are you know we ordered boxes off of Amazon. Like you said, you can order different sizes, and just assemble them. Have that good um, masking tape and all that stuff you have to use. But um, oh shoot, the last thing is like um, you know, in, in my at our office they had these great you know the paper boxes. They're just like the right size. They're like. And then they were solid and they were, they were like, what's what reams of paper come in. So we were lucky. I, I would just collect those. Mm-hmm. I called it box hunting and I'd go around the building looking for these boxes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks. This no. is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Um, two things. I think I thought I heard Pete say his name, but uh, so he might have something. Okay. And uh, another type of box I use for glasses are uh, as in you know drinking glasses are the boxes that bottles of wine come in because they have um, the the separate sections for each bottle of wine and they also are deep enough so they fit you know the glasses can fit in there and Sometimes, depending upon the types of glasses that they are, if they're really deep uh, wells that you put the that that a wine bottle would go in, you might be able to put two glasses together if you in that same compartment. You know, if you properly um, insulate them so they're they don't break. But I found those to be very helpful. If you know a, a liquor store that saves their wine boxes. Okay. okay. All right. You're the third person mentioned about wine. So I know we may have to do a future talk you're talking about wine or something like that on another topic. But uh, <laughs> Pete, do you uh, <laughs> want to say something? I know oh, Pete's here. I didn't know this was Shree. Oh, go ahead, Shree. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, you know, before this call started, you know, my parents moved to India um, last year and so they left everything so my sister came here uh last week in four days she cleared the three-story house completely uh, i don't know how she did it you know she's also blind uh but you know she wow. put uh i guess you know she had some plan of action and she went through it and but you know when you guys mentioned about the boxes we did go to home depot and the reason we went to Home Depot is, you know, Sonia mentioned about the, excuse me, about the bo- the boxes. <clears throat> the boxes that you get at Home Depot, they actually have handles, mm-hmm. uh, you know, where you can actually put your hand through to lift the box. And that makes a big difference because I remember we were lifting some personal stuff that we put in boxes. And without that handle, it would have been very difficult to try to grab it, to walk around with it. Mm-hmm. But because it had the handles, it made it a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Yep, it does. It does help. So to carry that. Now, the story I was going to tell, because I think somebody had mentioned about making sure, because you got a big box, be careful what you're packing in there. The first time I moved to Kansas City, Missouri, back in 1992, I moved up there with not much of anything. I think I had a few clothes, I had a stereo, and that's it. Because I was relocating, I was able to move in with a friend of mine, because I was able to find employment there, rather than the state that, that I was living in. Now, when I was moving back, to Louisiana from Kansas City, you know, of course, I accumulated some stuff. And it was, I already assessed what I was going to take with me and what I was giving away and what I was probably putting in storage so I could come back and get the rest of it. And I had a lot of Braille books. And anybody who is a Braille reader, you know, a lot of Braille books, some of them are not small. Um, they usually about three inches thick, you know, the back part of it. And I think I had a whole Braille Bible amongst other books. I had albums. And so knowing that I had all this and I wanted to kind of keep it together, I went and bought this 
big old box. This box was about, uh, and I'm kidding you not, guys. This box was probably five and a half feet tall. Um, you know, it came up to like right under my chin. And so I'm like, okay, this is perfect. So I put all of my Bibles, all of my books in this box. I even put some of the albums in there because there was room. Okay, let's put it in here. Let's put this there. Taped it up. Didn't realize, whoa, this box is heavy. <laughs> I mean, I got like about 30 Braille books. And this was, I got some albums and who knows else was in there. And my brother came down in his SUV. He had a... um. Oh, what kind of car did he have? It was it was an SUV. It wasn't um Ford Explorer. Well, I think it was a Blazer, something like that. That we was you know limited to what we can put in here, and then we thought, well, okay, well let's probably strap it on top. But the box was kind of like too long to go up there. Uh, so that 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 big old box became somewhat of a nuisance. Um, we're trying to figure because I made a mistake of putting everything in it. It was definitely too heavy. Um, the albatross booked in there, and so I think I ended up. Uh, was going to try to take it to either Greyhound and have it shipped that way, <laughs> or take it, and then that was a major expense because I think even ship it was going to be well over one hundred and fifty dollars. That's good because of the weight. <laughs> so it is definitely important to recognize when you're boxing. You know, don't do like a day get the big old box and just put everything in there you know, because <laughs> somebody's got to lift that besides you. Anybody else? Go ahead, did you have a dolly? Uh, yeah, but the, it, for this big old box, it just was too big for what we was traveling in. You know, I'm going from Missouri back to Louisiana. <laughs> you know, we couldn't even fit it because we didn't have a truck. We just had this SUV. And um, it, it wasn't like the big SUVs where you have like, you know, I didn't even think about maybe uh, probably renting a trailer to put some of this stuff. I, 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 that stuff didn't even appear to me. I was just like, you know, I'm moving. I'm leaving Missouri, going back to Louisiana. I'm taking what I can take and, you know, going to put it in this car and maybe ship the rest. So I ended up putting some stuff in storage. And my plan was to come back, you know, later and get the rest of it in like a van or something like that. But I didn't even have the thought of, um, you know, renting a trailer mm -hmm. and we could have just pulled it that way. This is Sonia. Hey, Sonia. I don't know if y'all have talked about, I know my niece did this. It's like a pod, you know, where they bring, they'll bring this huge thing to your yeah, house and then you pack it as whatever you want in there. I mean, it's a pretty big, I don't know the dimensions. I'm not the best about this, I mean, but it's huge. And then you get it ready and then you call them and then they take them. So that's another, I don't know how expensive it is, but I remember my niece did that and took all her stuff across the country. So this is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Yeah, that's very reasonably priced. I know a friend that did that and they just, they drop the pot off, you load up, your, you put your stuff in it and then they come and they pull it away. And that's a really great idea. The other thing I was going to suggest is there's an app called Nextdoor. And in the app, mm -hmm. it's, it's like all local people and they, they post, you know, things that are happening around and gee, I need a painter. And, you know, it's a great way to commun to, to communicate with, you know, people that are in your neighborhood. And a lot of times people will post in next door that they've just moved and they've got boxes. So that might be mm -hmm. another, another way to find, or you can even, you know, you can even average, you know, make a request that I'm moving and I need boxes. So that, that'd be another source for boxes too. But, but yeah, those, that pot idea is a great, that's a great idea. Yeah, and I do have this the neighborhood app on my phone. So I, it's, it's locally here too as well. Yes, Ray. This is Vincent. Um, so one thing, you know, it, you know, my father, you know, you know when he moved, uh, the places that he moved, his, his company actually paid for the relocation. And part of the relocation was that the company paid for the move. So, you know, if you're moving for business, you should also inquire with your company to see if uh, the moving and relocation is part of it. Okay. Go ahead, Vincent. Uh, yeah, the, just uh, uh, on, on boxes, uh, aside from the dimensions, you also have to make sure what is the maximum weight that you can put in a box, number one, and distribute the weight evenly. Especially okay, this is if you're going to be moving the boxes yourself, you know, using mm -hmm. the friend's car or 
any mode of transportation, <clears throat> which yeah, is something that you don't have to deal with if you are using a professional movie. Yeah, and definitely do like Shree said too, you know, but he asked me to have a dolly. A dolly does come in handy, especially if you got like big furniture, big heavy stuff, or even just for moving a lot of boxes at one time, that dolly come in handy. There was a lady before Shree who called for the floor, and I don't remember what the name was. Kathy. Before. Kathy, was it you? Um, I was just going to throw in... A good combination is like record albums and throw pillows. <laughs> of course, now record albums aren't a big problem anymore. Probably nobody has them. I wish I still had mine, but mine got lost to Katrina. Uh, go ahead, Shree. <laughs> no, I was just going to make a comment about Vincent. Made me think about um, what you were doing with your five feet tall boxes. You know, you were just looking at it. It said, okay, the maximum pound is uh, 50 pounds. And you go, oh, no, there's more space. Okay. Yep. What if ten more pounds to it? Uh. <laughs> I didn't even check. I didn't even do all that. Let, let's show you that I was there very disorganized. I just know let's put stuff in boxes, and I only had one of those. I just got that one box because I know I had all these books, and I didn't want to leave my books behind. This is <laughs> Ned. Yes, Ned. Great yes, to hear I, from you. I, yeah, I'm switching categories, but my last move, I used a professional uh, company which packed me up and unpacked me. But before they touched anything, they went around and took pictures in my kitchen, my living room, my study, uh, so that when I got to my new place, everything, I mean, even my pantry was like my old pantry. Uh, uh, when they put everything in, my, my computer was where it was. The printer was to the left. Everything you know, in, in my bathroom, the toothpaste, the toothbrush, everything was if I was in my old place. And I, I thought that was that, that really blew me away. I did not know that they were doing that when they were preparing to pack me up and then unpack me. And I thought, oh my God, when I discovered everything was in the same place, you know, my appliances on the counters is like, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. So that was a touch that I really liked of them taking pictures. Yeah, I was going to mention, you guys, they got companies that will probably do, they make it can make it so easy for you that you can probably go away for maybe a couple of days and come back and everything is in place. Now, I do know they even got companies that will pack your stuff for you. Um, you know, they, they, they probably would do like, they probably come and do an inventory, have like an interview. Okay, what do you want this? What do you want to go away? And they will actually pack it up for you. Now, of course, that's going to be an extra cost. Uh, you know, they will do that. They will wrap it up for you. They will cost for it if you want that. Um, most of the time, I used to pack this up myself because I didn't want to pay for that extra. I just needed to move. Now, that what you mentioned, Ned, that is, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't find it unimaginable that that can happen. But that is a good job uh, that they actually want to probably set up your place, especially if you got the same amount of room at your new spot that you have at your old spot yeah taking the pictures help them to set it up like you had it before uh you know what what things goes in the bathroom where they're going to sit at how they organize how they're stationed your pantry where you want your canned goods just by eating all of that stuff and by them having those pictures we're probably they're probably now using videos <laughs> so yes, they can know exactly did. where your stuff is going to know how to organize your, your wardrobe you know stuff hanging up here what goes in the different chest of drawers and all of that so I, I, I can imagine somebody probably do put a lot of effort into that and uh, you know if you want to do that if you're that you know want to really let it be handled and there's nothing really, I wouldn't say it's being lazy I say it's being you know these people do it. That's what they in the business for. And if you are in a position to hire them to do that, I say go for it because that is definitely a load off of you. Because all you got to do now is just make sure everything is cleared out from the old place, turn in the keys, you know, whatever's going on, and just walk into your new place and pick up life like you had it before. This is <laughs> Ned. All right, Ned first, and then Gary. yeah, just a quick on one of my moves. I had Packers. And when I was unpacking myself that morning, uh, I made some coffee in my in my coffee maker, and and I you know drank my coffee, and that was the end of it. And they packed everything up. When I got to my new place, was unpacking. 
my God, they even packed my coffee grounds. My coffee <laughs> grounds were packed. I said, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Man, what, what moving company is that for you? I have always used Mayflower. I've been very pleased with Mayflower. But in Nationwide? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm most happy. Sure they've been good. I never have had them do that. Okay, yeah, who Jody. else? Okay, there was Jerry, then Jody. I think there was somebody else that was right around Jerry. I didn't hear, but go ahead, Jerry. This is um, Jerry. Okay, Jerry, I got you. Um, I would... I was just going to say that it sounds really nice, you know, just to sit and have someone else do it. You know, I would love to do that. You know, sometimes as you get older, you just soon pay for it, you know, for the convenience instead of having to, you know, do it all. But then on the other hand, it seems like I have found that when other people do it, now I'm a little bit, uh, what the word I want, misplaced, or I'm... So how did they pack that? And where's my such and such? And where's my what they think is being organized in packing something? You know, I may have not packed it that way. So now I can't find it. So yeah, I'd rather pack things myself and go through the hassle of you know packing it. And then I know for sure that I packed the cord to my computer or the coffee maker without the grounds or you know. Whatever. Now keep in mind, you know, when we're discussing this, we're not saying you need to do this. This is basically just we just swapping oh, right, suggestions. Right, 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 right. So if you are right. somebody Here's who is hands on, you know, you have your way, you know where things are. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm kind of like that, you know, because I know where things should go. Um, just like even if I'm um, <laughs> unpacking my suit, or if I'm packing my suit, or even in going into my office. I know everything has its place. Uh, even when I'm checking, when I'm flying, and how, you know, the, you go through the airline, you go through TSA, they make you want to empty all of your pockets, and, and then after you go through and you pass the screening, they, sometimes the agents want to try to assist you taking the stuff out of your bag. Like, no, 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 let me do this, because <laughs> yeah, everything right, exactly. has a specific <laughs> space it goes. You know, my wallet goes in this pocket. My chains goes in this pocket. My keys goes in this pocket. My cars yeah. go here. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of like this. So, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Terry, this is done. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Terry. Um, one of the things that I have used, and, of course, now I'm not moving things out of my house. I'm just moving at this point. I'm just moving them around my house. Mm -hmm. so they can replace the carpeting in mm -hmm. my whole house but a, a thing mm -hmm. that movers will sometimes use and I have two are the sliders that yeah like discs that fit under some people call them the leg. Movers. I mentioned mm -hmm. mentioned yeah. Yeah. yeah some people call them funnage movers and it does and help things slide those can be help. very helpful too mm -hmm. okay we had, Jody, we had Jody and then Sandia I, uh, yeah, this is Jody. I used United Van Lines when I moved from Florida back to New Hampshire and I got talk and, and they, they did an excellent job. And the, the driver was funny because I said to him uh, something about, you know, moving to New Hampshire, you know, going from Florida to New Hampshire. He said, oh, I go back up and down the East Coast all the time. He said, I move people from New England to Florida. And then when they decide they don't like Florida, then I move them back to New England again. So <laughs> United Van Lines... <laughs> Is a great is a great company too, but the one thing I was going to comment about, and I don't know if it's been mentioned yet, is is um, labeling the boxes. And yeah, I don't we know did if, talk about that. <laughs> oh, you did talk. Okay, because I got a phone call and I missed it. Um, okay. Because I was going to say, if you have low vision, you can use different color stickers for each room. Mm -hmm. And I did that uh, years ago, and then and then you can also use the uh, uh, pen friend or the NFC stickers too. You know to uh to label boxes okay go ahead Sandia. all right this is more like the you know really getting into the nitty-gritty once you are really about to move and you go to the new place where is everything so again my sister's idea was to have one box that has everything that you need for that first night oh, all the yeah. stuff that you're going to need because you're not going to your towels right. and your toothpaste and all the other your nightgown and whatever so right. have at least one or two days worth of stuff in case it doesn't get there or you can't find it 
everything that you need that first night. Good job. This is Vincent. Uh, Vincent, I think it was. Uh, yes, uh, I was just going to mention in line with what uh, Jody just said, uh, it, uh, al along with the box that you need for the first night, uh, all your medications, anything that yes. you absolutely have to do uh, with, keep with you, carry it with you, don't let it out of your, your presence, because Sorry. even if it's a yeah. reliable company or whatever, something may happen. Your legal documents, your wills, your, your bank books, or any, anything that, that that you have to be have uh, you know by yourself at all times, right? And uh, one sure. just a comment. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Vincent. Okay, just one comment on uh, 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 somebody was mentioning about next door and the like. One item that I have found useful, and I do it myself with uh, my neighbors and all that. It is very hard to find, uh, you know, people that are good at their jobs. You know, there there are many moving companies. Some are better than others, and word of mouth is the best uh, advertising, as George was pointing yes. out before. So I make it a point of talking to my neighbors uh, about plumbing, for example. You never know when you're going to need plumbing. You never know when you're going to need a, you know, a locksmith or a roofer or uh, different people, even a, a car, if, if, if you, you have a car or your wife has a car uh, or somebody in your household has a car, find out the reliable mechanics, which is not easy to find. Uh, so if you can be either the source or ask you know, people that live in the, uh, uh, in the neighborhood about those items, uh, I have found it rewarding, very helpful. And I have established a long, a good relationship with many of the people that uh, provide those services. And once again, like she said, you know, sometimes cheap is expensive. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, Go this is Grace Ray. Um, and then, um, so how, okay. um, my question to you is, do you think they did that because you're visually impaired is why the reason they put it together or did you actually pay extra to okay. have them do that? Raise hand, let's talk. Who are you asking that to? I was asking him how, since it, he since that service was given to him. Oh, whether whether he actually paid for that or they did it because they knew he was visually impaired. Was that you mean Ned? I think you mean Ned. Ned, sorry, Ned, Ned, sorry, Ned. Oh, Ned, Ned, you still here? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, so Ned, was, my question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, I, I I told him that I was visually impaired, that I, you know, had only saw shadows and things and that I needed, I said, this move is stressing me out. And they said, no, no, <laughs> just sit here, relax, we will take care of everything. And okay. so, but yeah, I, I was going to get, I mean, the company was going to pack me up and unpack me. That, that was the piece that I wanted. And uh, so... Yes. Hi, this is Ann. Yes, Ann. Hi. I just wondered about the same thing. I, I missed a couple minutes because my internet went up, but can somebody give me a general idea about like this packing and unpacking and moving costs? I know it's variable across the country, but is there any way to know what kind of uh, this might cost? Well, Ned, I know, I know you're in Texas. Um, if you don't mind sharing, uh, how much did you pay for that? And I paid a little over two thousand dollars. And how many rooms? You know, how much moving was it? Uh, we we did it in one day. You know, I I, I have a two bedroom apartment now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure, uh, and the cost will vary on how much has to be moved, how big of the place it is. I'm sure that has yes. right. variance. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they okay. came. They came and measured. Uh, my furniture, they did all that. I know they were doing that because okay. uh, the guy showed up one day, then the movers came another day. I mean, the Packers. Mm -hmm. Right. And and so, uh, and I wanted to make sure that my bed was going to be made, that I was going to sleep that night in my bed. You know, they had they had put aside linen for me, uh, so my bed was made. My washer and dryer was set up. Oh, uh, wow. And running. And um, they hung a shower curtain so I could take a shower. 
So and how many hours? The how many hours did this take? Uh, I mean, the day that I moved, they showed up at nine o'clock in the morning, and I just moved twenty-two miles down the road, and they were done by six in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. This yeah. is free. I mean, it's not like they did a great work. That's to say, if anybody's in position to do that, you know, by all means, right. that's, fine. that's like that's like a definitely a stress-free move you did, man. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Shree. No, I was just gonna say, you know, I, I completely agree. You know, this is something you know, cheap can be very expensive, like um, Vincent said, and I learned because the first move we paid, I think, like nine hundred dollars. The next move was like almost four thousand dollars. But the the level of effort that we had to do with this versus the other is like night and day different. So yes, right. it's it is expensive, mm -hmm. but you know you, you don't you don't worry about like I remember you it. know Rita had to actually help them lift things you know and and I'm wondering like you know we're paying these people and we're right. helping them move right because mm -hmm. they were just not equipped yeah and so I think you know you really have to. Uh, take into consideration because i know the the company that we paid four thousand dollars they actually their employees spent two weeks just learning how to lift a box wow you know just they mm -hmm. have to go through this class you know and mm -hmm. and you could tell by how they lift things you know they use these little uh it's not like little ropes but these kind of like bands that they put underneath and mm -hmm. they use the leverage of that to lift it yeah it's, it's all about it's, it's amazing they providing... just put it in their back and they're just walking yeah it's all about providing quality service Right. And sometimes, you know, quality, if you want stress free, you know, it may cost. That's what I say. You only if in position yeah. to do that. Not everybody can. And don't feel yeah, bad if true. you can't. And then right. there's nothing wrong with being hands on, too. Because, like I say, that's me. You know, sometimes I like to, you know, I, I don't mind during the packing because I like to know which box is what and I can tell them what's that. And that's leading me actually to my next topic, too, that once you get to the new place uh, so that you move is extremely organized. Yeah give your movers instructions as to where things go and you would right. know that because you know your place how you want things to be set up and right. some of them will ask you okay which room is the living room which room is the bedroom which one is bedroom number one what's number two you know they will get that information from you so that you know when you get there or even if you are riding with them well most of them don't have you ride with them they have to provide like your own transportation or something like that but uh, to, to make it a smooth transition and to save time, uh, give instructions where things should be placed. And, right. you know, my last movers, yeah, they did just what, um, not to the, the, the level of the type of service Ned had, but they did unpack my stuff. They did reassemble my furniture, uh, you know, put the bed together, <laughs> put the couch back together, put the legs back on the table. You know, they did that. And they did it with such efficiency that, yeah, I could have done it, but not <laughs> nearly in the time frame that they did it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, because yeah, you know the bed I'm having, you know, it it I put it together by myself before once on one move, and <laughs> it took me probably, if I had to guess, um, for the bed frame, for the headboard, making sure each oh screw go where, because I had like screws in this pocket. I knew everything's good. It took me probably about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. They put oh, yeah, that no. thing together in twenty minutes. Exactly. 20 minutes because they, they had to, like they had the power screwdrivers. Yeah. Zoo, zoo, zoo. All right, we're done. <laughs> it's right. done. Whoa. This this is now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Ned. Yes. Uh, on the day that I moved, I made arrangements for a friend to come and pick me up uh, when they left the old place to get me to my new place. And the two guys said, "We got you covered. You don't have to do that." They put me in the truck as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. There you <laughs> yeah, go. I sat in the front seat of the truck. I, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Um, oh, yeah. wow. They drove me to my new place. Gary. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, who, who was before That's Gary? Great. I think it was Helene. And... Helene. Go, Helene. Good I haven't heard been, from you tonight, so just go ahead. This has been great. I, I have to go. I think great. Okay, no problem. So thank, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead, Helene. Um, I, you know, because we moved uh, from Brooklyn to Ridgefield, Connecticut, and then at Ridgefield, Connecticut to Woodstock, New York, and uh, many of the things that I had, if I wanted to send to my children, 
and I'd have the mover bring something. And you're right, cheap is very expensive because we gave a gorgeous table to my kids in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And um, the guy we got, oh, let's get Ralphie. And uh, he was very kind, but really not professional. And he put the uh, table upside down and then he pushed in the nails. And then when you turned the table up on the top, the nails broke through the top of the gorgeous cherry wood Oh, oh, no. and, 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 you know, you don't get back, you know, anything you don't ask. Or any, I mean, I don't know. It just, you know, these things were ruined. And I just think that now when I am in Woodstock and whenever I need to move, I just call, you know, this guy, Steve Arnold, and he comes over and there is a minimum. You always have to know that um, there's a certain number of hours and mm-hmm. that's what they charge. But right. this guy knew what he was doing. And when he moved, when my husband died and um, that we wanted, my granddaughter wanted to bring up, you know, didn't want to get rid of Poppy's chair. And so mm-hmm. we took, he, they, they figured out how to get that chair. Like they they really knew and, and analyzed and got it over a banister and then took apart some piece of it and then put it back together. And people who know what they're doing are worth they're right. white and gold. So right. you know, just just be aware that you get references <laughs> because there's been exactly too too many nightmares um, you know, of moves. And my kids in exactly. Manhattan moved around the corner and they had this a- Asian um company and the, the the movers that they hired didn't speak English and oh, um, they, they didn't see that the cats were in the bedroom and so my daughter-in-law called me hysterical crying saying that they left and they they were moving literally around the corner and she said she said they didn't go in there because the door was shut and that's because the cats were in there and so that whole bedroom wasn't moved and to get the people to go back I mean my daughter-in-law was so hysterical crying I thought Uh. guilty that when you're recommending and you think that you're saving them money, um, it really costs a lot in stress. Mm-hmm. Sandia. Go ahead, Sandia. Okay, we're like about 15 till. And just one other note I was going to say, every time we move, I don't know about y'all, but I'm a total pack rat. So you should always <laughs> use that opportunity to get rid of stuff. Get rid of stuff. I, yes. Practice what you, you know, I yeah. can't do it, but I'm telling other people. But I mean... You're just hauling the same stuff around. So, you know, try to <laughs> use that opportunity to get rid of stuff. Kind of, kind of think it yeah. out, or before you, I know you guys want to speak to, but let me cover two more things in the time we got left, which is kind of talking about that. Um, after you get moved, yes, and I think everybody at some point, especially if you stayed someplace for a substantial amount of time, you never realize how much you've accumulated. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I guess I'm a minor kind of a pack record. You know, I have some things that I just hold on to, and I don't know why I still have it. Um, and some things, you know, depends on the shape of it. But if it's going to be a good use, you know, I may keep it and bring it over with me. Um, or I may um, depart from it. It may get thrown away, or somebody, you know, you know how to say it's with someone's uh, trash, it's another person's treasure. If people want it, you know, I give it away. Because uh, one thing I want to talk about, like some people, when they're doing the move, some folks have what they call a garage sale, which means this is a way that you can get things cleared out and possibly, you know, may make a little change for it. it depends on, you know, you may tell people to make your offer or something or it depends on how value it is. If you're going to do garage sales, you have to be very careful with those as to who's going to assist you with that. I mean, you know, it's the public, you know, garage sales is the public, anybody's coming by. If you're going to do that and go down the rabbit, uh, not rabbit hole, go go use that thing to probably clear up or clean out, so to speak. Uh, that's where you have to get someone that you can trust to make sure that they're keeping an eye on yourself. That's stuff not just walking away without somebody. You know, no, I guess you, you would know your community. You would know your neighborhood, too, because they got some neighborhoods that everybody's very neighborly. They will look out for you. They will walk up to you and you know, ask you about this, ask you questions about whatever the, 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 the thing is and how much you want for it. You know, you can put prices on stuff or you can tell, like some people say, 
hey, make me an mm-hmm. offer. We'll see. You know, we'll go by. It. So if you're going to do garage sales, um, definitely plan ahead for those. You know, pick your day. Hopefully the day that you pick is nice weather um, because that yeah. draws a lot of, you know, attention. You know, garage sales, believe it or not, sometimes I know some people are real. Some people do it for, for I don't want to say a living, but they just do it a lot. That they'll go out and put like ads in the paper or put signs on the neutral ground or somewhere in the neighborhood, you know, garage sale on this day. <laughs> but I've also seen garage sales are so successful in certain part of town. You don't need to even put a sign up. Just have stuff out. And people will ride around, especially if you're on the street. It doesn't have to be a major street, but it's just a street that, you know, somebody's always going to pass by looking down and they'll go tell somebody or they'll call somebody. Uh, you know, especially if you got something big that they want, it yeah, costs money to come help them move it. So garage sales is one way of actually unloading stuff. What if you want to give it away or sell it? Um, uh, and make sure it's organized too, um, to where, you know, things are like section, you know, don't just throw those out there and have people just pick into it. Have it like neatly. Have like you, if you have clothing, put it on a rack if you can get one of those, or fold them up on a table. If you have electronics, have them in, in, on the table in certain places. Um, if it's something that is electronic, I would say even have it if you can. If, if it's run by batteries, or you can plug it up so that way you can display it. And they can see this is such a good thing that you uh, somebody may be uh, getting a hold of. Um, if you want to grill something, you know, there's all kind of ways to track attention to garage. So that's one way of actually uh, unloading some stuff that you probably don't even use anymore. Probably if you forgot to even add. Um, another thing too, if if you need it, and if you're going to like have a storage because you probably accumulate so much stuff and some of the stuff is val- valuable that you haven't figured out where you're going to put it, where you're going to keep it, or you're going to get rid of it, but you don't just throw it away. Then, you know, they got all kind of storage facilities that you can rent for little money. You know, some of them have $25 a month as low as some of them have probably $99 a month. Depends on the size of the storage, which company it is, as well as um, there may be a special, maybe a dollar for the first month and then the regular price for the next month. So you definitely can shop around for that. Anybody got any comments on storage or garage sales or anything else that if anybody wanted to chime in? We've uh, got seven more minutes, George. Yeah, we got like, yeah. Wait, I was, I'm glad you checked. I was checking too. For the last few um, minutes we got. Gary and Vincent. Okay, I heard Gary and Vincent. Gary? Okay, yeah. One thing I have done whenever I've moved to a new place and I need to find out some kind of landmarks of what it looks like or what's around there in the complex or whatever, I will ask three or four different people Mm -hmm. the same questions uh, because somebody might miss something that somebody else saw or something like that. So I ask uh, quite a few, you know, as I say, three, four, maybe five people, you know, what does this place look like? What, you know, what's near, what, you know, this, that, the other thing. So mm-hmm. that's another thing. Try to get as much information about where your place is in right. relation to Definitely. the rest of your complex, your neighborhood, as you can. I would even add right. to that too. Yeah, visit the place at all hours. You know, you may go to a place and during the day where everybody's working, it's peaceful and it's quiet because no one is there. I'll say, you know, go snoop, go go visit again like after six if you can, so that way you can really see what the neighborhood is like after. Uh, the show and tell type of hour. Um, Vincent. Uh, yes, uh, on storage, uh, set a time frame for how long you're going to keep that storage unit. If you have not used anything in two years that is in storage, get rid of it. Call junk Sarah, junk Sarah or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Anybody else? Well, thank Shree. you. Oh, go ahead, I was going to say one other thing that, you know, if you do get a professional mover, make sure everything's written in contract. You know, don't say yes, yes and not have it be in a written contract. Yeah. And read over that contract. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely check all the fees, check all whatever they're offering. And even don't feel you're asking too many questions, guys. 
I mean, remember, it's your stuff. It's your move. You control it at. You hire and if you're going right. to hire a mover, ask, get all of your questions you. answered. Don't even think you're asking too many questions. I mean, they want your business. They are there to answer all of your right. questions. Even if it's a language right. barrier, they'll get an interpreter for you. Right. Uh, this so, is Terry. Yes, Terry. Hey. Um, if you're going to put things in storage, you want to try, if at all possible, to find a reputable storage company because there are a lot of them out there you put your stuff in storage i know somebody who lost some things because they were probably stolen mm -hmm. um, by the company that she used for storage and mm -hmm. or they they were not stored properly so you really want to do your homework there. Do your homework. And I would even say, uh, kind of like what Ned's company had done, take pictures of your stuff too. So that way, when you go to clear out, you know what was there. Give them a copy of the picture. And it may even be worth some, the insurance doesn't cost that much too, you know, for your stuff as well. Just in case there may be some inclement weather, especially if your storage space is like on the ground floor. So that way you, you can be covered by that as well. And the insurance is really, sometimes I think it's like an additional $10 to cover like maybe $25,000 or $50,000 in value. Um, I know this is from experience. Not that I had anything damaged, but just from me exercising and everything. Now, I haven't had the kind of move like Ned had, but, you know, that's a thought. Because <laughs> that is definitely stress-free. All right. Well, I think we are close to the end, or we should be at the bottom of the hour. I want to thank everybody. I want everybody who participated, sharing your comments, your experiences, your questions, your suggestions. All of those are definitely very valuable. Uh, share this information. Um, and um, next month, we're going to be here again next month, the fourth Thursday at 7 p.m. Central. Do the math on whatever time zone that you're in. And we uh, bring your taste buds. We're going to have a guest presenter who's going to be preparing a dish again for all of us. Mm. Um, so, yeah, come on. We did spaghetti last month. It's not, I don't know if I want to say what the meal is going to be. Oh, he told me what he's going to prepare. Let it be a surprise. So it, it's something good. It's something good. So, <laughs> all tune right. in on March the... No, not March. We're in March. April. <laughs> yes, April. April, whatever fourth Thursday that is. Okay. April 23rd, I think it is. I think it's no, April no, no, April 20th? 27th. April 27th. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah that's You're right. right. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, thank you, George. That was a lot of fun. And uh, thank you for all the good ideas, everybody. And remember tomorrow's movie, The Lost City at 8 p.m., and then the workshop on Saturday. So it'll be fun covering some topics that we always ask about and then there's one that should be really fun i'm not going to tell you what it is but i hope you'll come okay and with that here we go we're going to end it with what we started we all right good night to all. To all right. thank you for watching Good night, everybody. <laughs>